Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Henry and welcome back for another exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about what is that blue knob or lever that is in an aircraft. Now, whether if you're a real pilot or a wannabe pilot, this is a very important question to answer. So whether if you've been in a real aircraft with these and you've seen pilots playing around with them, or if you're just playing around in flight sim and you've always wondered what this knob does, today we are going to answer that question. Now before we can solve the mystery of the blue knob, we have to solve the mystery of what is a propeller. So as you probably know by now, at least hopefully, a propeller creates thrust by using the energy of the engine and crankshaft and it thrusts air backwards, basically propelling the aircraft forward. Now, believe it or not, there are two main types of propellers. There are fixed pitch propellers and variable pitch propellers. Fixed pitch propellers are basically normal propellers, what you think of in your movies, things like that, that cannot change pitch. They are static. They could be made of wood, metal, etc. What a variable pitch propeller is, is that it can be changed by the pilot. Now, before we can continue on talking about the different kinds of variable pitch propellers, we need to talk about what I mean when I say pitch, when I'm talking about propellers. I'm not talking about uh, the propeller singing, although that would be a very interesting YouTube video indeed. I am talking about the angle of attack the propeller meets the air at. All right. So there are two main kinds of pitch, and you've probably heard these before. There are coarse pitch or high pitch and fine pitch, uh, low pitch. So what coarse pitch means is that the propeller takes a greater chunk of air. All right. So there's a high angle of attack of the air. This leads to a decrease in RPM revolutions per minute of the propeller. Cause again, it's taking a larger chunk of air since it's taking more air. This is a lot better for cruising. Um, and it's better for like, you know, cross country. What a fine pitch propeller does is that since uh, it has a higher RPM because it is taking a smaller chunk of air, this kind of uh, pitch is a lot better for um, taking off as well as uh, your climb because, again, you have that higher RPM. So these are kind of the two uh, main pitches that we're going to be talking about when talking about variable speed propellers, things like that. So now that we have these two different pitches of uh, propellers, we can kind of see where a fixed pitch propeller might be lacking. So sure, you might have a good takeoff and climb performance, but your cross-country performance may suffer and vice versa. But with a wonderful variable pitch propeller, so that can be changed by the pilot, you can see where the advantage is now because you can change your pitch of propeller based on the situation you are in. So now let's talk about our three main kinds of variable pitch propellers. So again, these can be changed by the pilot. The first is adjustable pitch propellers. These can be adjusted by the pilot on the ground, and you might change it if you're operating at a high altitude airport, if you're just staying nearby for circuit training, or if you're going cross country, you might change it to different pitches, right? The second is a constant speed propeller. These propeller blades are actually able to adjust themselves to maintain a constant RPM during flight as set by the pilot. So again, think of it as the propeller thinking for you. And last but not least is a controllable pitch propeller. So the blades can be adjusted by the pilot during the flight. Now, before we start our demo flight, there's two things to talk about. Firstly are the uh, manifold pressure gauge and the tachometer. Now, the manifold pressure gauge is usually measured in inches of mercury, and it's basically the uh, pressure of the fuel-air mixture in the uh, engine intake between the carburetor and the cylinders. Now, the manifold pressure with this kind of aircraft is controlled by the throttle. So again, the black knob, aka the throttle. All right. Now, the tachometer, so if you're somebody who drives a car, you know what this is, measures the RPM of an engine's crankshaft. So again, in this case, it is controlled by the propeller pitch on the variable pitch propeller aircraft. So again, this is what our blue knob controls. It controls the pitch of the propeller, all right? And of course, red mixture. We have a video for that too. Click here to go there. Now, before we start flying, one last thing to say is that there is a certain order that you actually have to move around. So whenever we increase power, we move right to left 
and decreasing power, you move left to right. What I mean by that is if we are getting ready for takeoff, increasing power, you make sure you have full mixture, propeller pitch full forward, and of course, throttle will be, will be full uh, forward. Vice versa, if we are uh, just coming off to cruise here, you decrease your power, change your pitch, and of course, lean your mixture after that. So that's the order how you uh, go through the three. Here's an excellent website if you want to spend more time looking at the actual how the propeller works. It has great uh, GIFs. Yes, I say it by the word GIF. Uh, and it basically goes over how the governor works. So it prevents overspeeds with propellers, things like that. I highly suggest that you read this article on Bold Method. Again, I've linked it in the description below. Please have a look at it. Support the creators. It is a great article on everything about a constant speed propeller. All right, now that we kind of have the knowledge out of the way, let's do a nice quick circuit in a DA40 on a constant speed propeller. All right, here we finally are in X-Plane 11 with a DA40 for a little demonstration here of how to fly a circuit with a constant speed propeller. So again, we're in Collingwood, CNY3, runway 13. We're just gonna do a quick circuit so then you can see what the difference is with an aircraft that uses the uh, constant speed constant speed prop and when you fly a normal Cessna or something that doesn't all right so a quick flight briefing is that we're gonna have full prop full mixture and full throttle for takeoff but once we get around 500 feet we're gonna dial back our rpm to around 2400 all right that is like your max allowable sustainable rpm for the engine all right sure the governor can help with that but we don't want to pressure on the engine so again if you've never seen the g1000 before manifold pressure is right here rpm right here and of course our three wonderful levers right down here i had a real life story where this broke in real life let me know if you want to hear about that story actually i think i made a youtube video about that okay that's enough side let us go forth and fly so let's make sure we have our fuel pump on come on yep fuel pump on flaps on Good to go break off let's go full power ah, so we're gonna aim for around a climb of around 80 knots again this is just for this demonstration every aircraft is different every heck even payloads will affect your airspeeds but let's just aim for around 80 knots so at around 1100 ASL there we're gonna take off our uh, flaps and fuel pump Let's get better airspeed here. So again, if you're too slow, lower the nose a little bit. Creep on up that 80 knots there. And around 400 feet here. Fuel pump off. Engine. So now we're gonna start our turn. To the left. Uh, not, not even 15 degrees. And of course, you're gonna see me bring that prop lever back now and if you're watching that prop you can see it has gone down because I pulled back my propeller I'm gonna go a little bit more towards the Sega beach here so now that we're there we can bring our manifold pressure back let's say around 19 to fly our downwind now. Now, the big thing about checks, so normally you have like your mixture check, things like that. Um, with prop, you don't literally do anything until you get to uh, just before you turn onto your base leg here. Because again, we do have our fuel pump on again now. Boop. Everything else, you don't really. So, pretty much around your uh, flaps, when you're doing your flaps, is when you're going to be doing this. So, once we kind of hit near our base leg, Under 108, flaps down. So if you remember what I said earlier, so you do your throttle, let's go down to just under 14 here, because again, this sim is different. I can then add full prop again. And we just kind of start our like little descent here. Give our flaps on the last here. 
see so again uh, if there was a failure in like the governor or hydraulics or engine again the propeller would fail with uh, fine pitch so pretty much what we have it set at already in real life it's been a while since i've flown in real it's been a year now because you know what going in the going on in the world right now and i can't wait to start flying again irl but yeah and then you just line up you do your thing rock on ah. Again, as you kind of saw, you only really change the prop twice when doing a circuit. So like after your 500 feet climbing, and then again, once you uh, do your wonderful uh, kind of base leg approach there. So again, you can change it during flight. Every aircraft is different. So again, it is in the uh, uh, POH, so your pilot operations manual of your different speeds, your different air pressures, things like that of different prop settings. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good airmanship to know your different prop settings for your different aircraft. But again, this, this is kind of like the stuff that I was taught. Everyone is indeed different. Everyone's going to be taught something slightly different. But again, if you have your own uh, kind of rule of thumb, definitely let us know in the comments below. But yeah, that, that's kind of like a general flight. It's not. I was worried at first when I first flew a... Uh, constant speed prop because I was worried having to deal with the propeller but really you only change it once or twice during a flight depending on what you're doing now there is one more thing I want to show you and for that we're gonna to have to hop on into well we don't have to but I'm going to just for the thumbnail or whatever we're gonna hop into Microsoft Flight Sim for a second let's 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 go take a quick look all right, second last point today. Uh, we are in the DA-40 once again at Collingwood, different end of the runway, and we are in Microsoft Flight Sim. Looks very pretty. Um, now, if you notice, we only have one knob now, and it's just labeled throttle control. What the heck happened? We had three before. We have the mixture, the prop, and the throttle. Well, they're all in condensed into one now, and this is called a FADEC. What a FADEC stands for is the full authority digital engine control FADEC. so basically the computer does the thinking for you and it does everything automatically the pitch the mixture your manifold pressure everything is done automatically by computers now so it won't be long until our uh, pilot jobs are run by computers but no um it's, it's a really great new technology it makes things a lot less uh a lot less going on in the cockpit now but that it is a very interesting technology now, let's go on to our last point of the video today, feathering. For this, we're going to switch to a simple, I say simple, multi-engine aircraft. All right, so here we are. We have our multi-engine aircraft. Now, the one thing, I, again, I wanted to talk about is feathering. What is that? So let's say we have an engine failure. I'm just going to do it on the ground because I'm lazy. So let's say if this engine failed during flight. Now... If you can see it, wind coming directly at the propeller, that's going to cause a lot of um, turbulence with the props and it's going to disrupt airflow. Basically what feathering is, is that you're taking the propeller and, as you can see with this diagram, you're making it pretty much in parallel with the airflow. So pretty much reducing drag on the aircraft and creating more efficiency. Um, so while most aircraft that are single engine you can't really do anything because again you lose power and again they fail in um, a fine pitch with that being said with some multi-engine aircraft you can uh, feather even if the engine is fail um, this requires like an auxiliary pump feathering switch things like that but basically what that does is that while you're in flight you're able to reduce your drag and you can increase your uh, distance that you can still go on a single propeller now, last but not least, there is something called prop reversing, which just like your good old uh, jet turbine engines, you can pretty much reverse the props. Um, a good example is a Q400, where uh, in an emergency situation, you have to stop. You can actually use your beta range, um, which is prop reversing. Pull back your props, helps you stop faster. Look at that. All right, that's, that's kind of it for this multi-engine aircraft. I need it. I can give it back to its owner i rented it for 400 dollars an hour just for that good job <laughs>
And there we go, folks. The mystery of the blue knob is solved. Thank you so much again for watching this tutorial. I really hope that it helped you even just a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, definitely put them in the comments below. We have a great community here. Thanks again for getting us just about 2,000 subscribers now. That's a lot. Thank you so much. If this video has helped you at all, please like and subscribe. Again, it helps a lot. I know you hear that often, but it really does help us smaller channels. Um, again, if you have any questions, things like that, let them be heard in the comments below where I will approve or unapprove your takeoff clearance. I don't know. I'm still working on my brand, guys. Anyways, thanks again for joining us, everyone. Have a great day. Fly safe. And as always, happy landings.